So first, I want to have to point out that we own Converse, so thank you for, <laughs> for keeping it in the family. Wonderful. If it was something else, we would have had an issue. So we all have our own God-given abilities, and I'm here today to talk to you about how I use my talents, my strengths, to become the first me rather than the next anyone else. So 1994, south side of Chicago. An event that lasted 180 seconds would be the catalyst for me becoming the person I am today. An argument that started between two of my friends resulted in me watching one of them being shot in the face and laying, excuse me, laying in front of me, clutching a gaping wound on his right cheek. In that moment, I held on to the only piece of normalcy that I had left. In that moment, I grabbed my left jacket pocket. And in that left jacket pocket, I carried with me a sketch on a torn piece of lime paper. That sketch was of my Air Jordan. You see, I knew that I would never fly through the air like Michael Jordan, but the thought of designing the shoe of Chicago's version of Perseus allowed my aspirations to soar. You see, I knew that I would never be an elite athlete that had endorsements, that would travel the world and have fans and have people stand outside to purchase my shoes. But I knew that I could become the first me. What was obvious is that there were three core similarities between me and Mr. Jordan. That was me when I had hair, by the way. <laughs> so it's evidence of me actually having hair at one point. So the first thing that was, a si that was simil similar between me and Mr. Jordan is we were both black males living in Chicago. The second, which I didn't know at the time, is that I would grow to be over six feet tall, just like my hero. The third and the most obvious, which is also the most unfortunate, is that we both are prematurely bald. <laughs> but luckily for me, I was predisposed to having a nice round head. So thank you, Mom and Dad, if you're watching live, <laughs> because those two together uh, have given me the head that I have today. But I didn't let those limited similarities stop me from dreaming. I can learn from Michael Jordan's work ethic. I can learn from the way in which he turned failures into success. He often tells me, Jason, turn your weaknesses into a strength. And that's what I did. I decided that design would become my oasis of hope. Design would be my way in which I would engage the world, my way in which I would inspire people, my way in which I would tell my story. So that story, excuse me, has led me around the world, from Chicago to Detroit, where I received my undergraduate degree and industrial design, excuse me, to Portland, Oregon, where I became Jordan Brand's first design intern, it was, which was amazing. It was my dream as a child. To Europe, where I learned about the Renaissance, and I learned about craftsmanship, and how to actually handcraft leather and form and, and structure and all these beautiful things that tell a story, that make design important and special. To Asia, where I learned about mass manufacturing, and how we actually get our products from sketch to retail. And then finally, to Stanford University, where last year I received my master's degree from the Graduate School of Business and General Management as a Sloan Fellow. And then back to Nike, where I'm now the Director of Innovation for Digital Sport, where we work on products that encourage people to do more, to be you, to get out and live life in the fullest capacity. Now, I say all this because people often ask me, how did shoes actually become your thing? Well, it wasn't that shoes were my thing, it was that moment, it was that bang. And I look back now and I realize that that gunshot was not symbolic of a tragic event. It was symbolic of the race towards me becoming me. That gunshot led me on an adventure that brought me back here today to encourage you all to become the first you. It's the most unique thing you can be, rather than the next anyone else. That's me, by the way. I had to make sure that I made my own guest appearance on the screen as well. <laughs> because we often suppress our dreams and our ambitions. We often are afraid to share who we want to become with the people who love us the most. But by opening up, opening up, being transparent, dreaming out loud, and proclaiming to the world that I want to be the first me rather than the next anyone else, you can embrace the power of being you. Thank you. <laughs>